Ladies and gentlemen, welcome again for another power packed episode right here at Live Nation with your guy DJ C254 and today we are stepping into a good topic. These are power packed topic about church and worship. And with me today in studio is a lady whom you are now familiar with and she's going to introduce herself and get you to know her better and as we jump into the topic of the day. Welcome. Thank you so much. My name is Annette Kesh and I'm glad to be back again in this place for the second time. Yeah, I give thanks to God and I believe we shall learn a few things here and there as we talk about worship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Well, you know, the best thing that I found out during our last episode was that uh, quite a lot of people resonated with your content, with your answer. The grace on you was so rich that it really touched quite a lot of people. Not only on YouTube but also on TikTok, they are quite too cool. Testify of the same, and we bless the Lord for that. Yeah, sure. It's so I know today you're going to touch even more people, when the Lord allows us for that. Yeah. So yeah, welcome guys, and feel free if you're a returning uh, viewer. Thank you for coming again, and if you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe. If this content will resonate with you, and uh, we'd like to hear from you. Give us a comment down there so that we can know if this content really resonated with you and how much more can we improve as we're in the stage of learning, improving and growing together. So our topic today is about worship and the state of worship as at now. We know in a new phase, a new generation and uh, there's a lot of misunderstanding that is coming across and we are jumping into understanding what's the real essence and the definition and the truth behind worship. So my first question will come like this. Uh, to somebody new, maybe they've just seen worship as an act of singing in church and that's all. What is worship in your personal understanding as Miss Cash? Okay, thank you. Um, in my personal understanding, worship is beyond singing. Mm-hmm. Worship is beyond the microphones. Worship is beyond the music that we hear in churches. Mm-hmm worship narrows down to the lifestyle that we live how we live Mm -hmm. how we do our things how truthful we are in line to god's word that's worship our lifestyle generally then music it's a compliment it complements Mm -hmm. worship Mm -hmm. but when we narrow down to the deep deep meaning of worship it's the way we live our lives Mm -hmm. as christians oh so music is a compliment it complements it, it builds the worship yeah it's like a, a a career for the worship but mm. worship basically is our lifestyle yeah somebody might be asking this lifestyle no we, we hear every round uh choice is a lifestyle uh whatever is a lifestyle and somebody is asking what's this lifestyle okay this lifestyle in the current generation mm-hmm. uh our lifestyle as a christian as a christian Mm -hmm. there is a way you carry yourself Mm -hmm. there is a way you carry yourself in a way that when someone sees you they'll say that that one Mm -hmm. is born again Mm -hmm. that is worship the way people recognize you Mm -hmm. the way you do your things people recognize that one is different and different in the positive dimension in line with the who god expects you to be not Mm -hmm. different in terms of conforming into the world patterns. Mm. Yeah. So it should be a person that radiates the glory of God. The glory wherever of God. You go. Yeah. That when people see the, you, you act like Peter, whether you're hiding, whether yeah. you are uttering a motto, <laughs> yeah, the, <laughs> whether you're walking, people mm-hmm. just see this one is different. Now that's a life given in worship. True. So it's not just about going to sing, uh, uh, we worship you, we praise you, and go home. It's all about living it every single day yeah every single day that's awesome that is powerful so when it comes to worship because you know there's different kind of worship there's just worship which is lip service just sing and uh, just live but there's worship that is led of the spirit and today we are going to speak about the worship that is led of the spirit we have seen a lot of people just do it and i know you you as a minister you resonate with this a lot You've been people who have been at the altar most of the time leading the congregation to worship. What do you see us today in this generation that is being done amiss from what it was used to? 
like in terms of worship in terms of worship from the first de- definition of worship mm. being that it's a lifestyle what is a miss nowadays is that uh, yeah we do lip service the way you've said it mm. we do practices voice coaching voice mm. we stand we clean our voice we practice very well with the instruments but after that stage mm. in your secret place what do you do because i understand nowadays not all worshipers not everyone who claims that they are worshipers or ministers of god mm-hmm. they really are because in the secret place we have messed mm-hmm. a lot people are different people are very different you find that someone is really doing it great at the altar mm-hmm. but when it comes to the personal lifestyle it does not align with what god's want it to be they are really, what they are really proclaiming to be yeah what they are really pro- proclaiming to be and i think today is, is more us because you find that the world has become more into the church and the church into the world that yeah. we, we 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 are in the state of compromise we want just to make things to look normal and if you you ask they'll say uh, we, we are going to the world to save the world so we have to become like them was that really a, a direction given to us no no that is not really the direction given to us as much as we we go into the world mm. because evangelism is a matter of going and preaching the word mm. meaning you're preaching to people who don't really know the word of god they don't really know jesus mm. but conforming into what they do then that's a mistake it becomes that's, another thing it becomes another thing well we find people going to club to preach in the club should people step in the club to preach in the club or wait outside <laughs> okay it starts from the heart what exactly are you going mm. to do uh, yeah i understand your case uh, the 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 case you're trying to bring out because it's happening nowadays mm. mm-hmm. someone is saying let me go to those clubs where the unbelievers are mm. but it depends with what exactly he is going to do there from my perspective it is okay but don't really conform to what happens in that club do you think it- 100% of people interact with that environment will come out clean and perfect. But it is very risky. That environment is bad. Okay, it's very risky for you to do that. And remember what also Paul said if what you do will cause this even if Jesus who said will cause this young one to fall. Yeah, and actually someone someone okay, someone who sees you at the altar, mm. you're worshiping, you're leading people into worship and This the same same person comes and see you entering sees you entering a club this person will think twice, twice. some people will not really agree with what you're going to do there mm. and it will cause them to fall because of your your direction because of your the action you've taken yes it is pure mm. you have pure intentions mm-hmm. you're going to save those unbelievers in mm. the club mm. but you have to really be careful because someone else maybe another believer who is just outside the club mm. and he sees you entering that place they might really think twice na mwananga uko mbele anaimba what is he coming to do the jana nilimona akitoka kwa club yes nilimona akitoka kwa club that we come another thing mm-hmm. so how do we experience the worship led spirit led worship how do somebody experience this spirit led worship in their life spirit led worship as worshipers the first step as a believer as mm-hmm. a christian as a worshiper mm-hmm. is purification mm-hmm. consecration you mm-hmm. consecrate yourself and worship another in another dimension it is not complete without giving mm-hmm. so there are many elements of worship mm-hmm. and the two things that I'll talk about is purification and consecration mm-hmm. so as a worshipper the moment you the moment you engage mm-hmm. in sin mm-hmm. and you want to go and lead people into worship mm-hmm. you have you know the holy spirit cannot stay where there is sin mm-hmm. you have you have a uh, how can i put it you have a uh, you have uh, extend the worship. yeah you have ex- not even that way 
you know when we have the, there is a this statement that says you put on some clothes and you quench the holy spirit mm -hmm. sin quenches the holy spirit mm -hmm. in you mm -hmm. so the moment you engage in sin you quench the holy spirit and it it cannot stay there mm -hmm. so when you go there to worship you cannot really lead a spirit led worship because you no longer have the holy spirit in you mm -hmm. so purification is purify yourself you have to, as a worshiper you have to pure you have to cleanse yourself mm -hmm. because there are there are sins that we know this is a sin but there are some we do without knowing so you must pray you must consecrate yourself in that consistently consistently day mm -hmm. by day Be before you lead any 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 gathering into worship mm -hmm. you have to do that for and you pray for the holy spirit to fill you again mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think that that purification is just a day-to-day -day activity that happens all around. Because yeah, somebody might say that why are we pointing out the present worshippers and uh, it's a call for all Christians to live a purified life. Yeah, all a, a holy life. Not not specifically because worship is not leveled at the altar alone. It's a daily life, yeah. So being a daily life as Christian, we are living a life of worship because that's the main reason why even God delivered the Israelite. They go and worship me. You know, say because Moses was the leader, mm -hmm. we had Levites in there. But when God was speaking, was speaking about all of them. And remember, when God wanted to visit the congregation, the assembly, He used to ask them to go purify themselves, because the third day I shall visit you. So, I think it's a, a cutting across all Christian. All Christians. That we have to live a purified, sanctified life. Yeah, actually, when we say worship is a lifestyle, it is not a uh, a staged music mm. we mean or so as a when i say as a worshiper mm -hmm. you know the dimension i'm put i'm yeah. going to yeah, because yeah, it yeah. is a life spirit is another key apart from consecration and purification yeah, being by, by the, the power spirit. of god's spirit yeah wow that's that's awesome uh what what do you see today because today we are more focused on practice is good yes we prepare for what will be delivered but today we are more more of practice the timeline the music you've set than giving the holy spirit the time to lead and you'll find that quite a lot of church we are like in a concert more than in a worship the the altar is hot the congregation is cold what do you think cuts across here maybe we don't understand what is happening as the congregation apart from the worship ministers okay in this practice in this practice mm -hmm. one thing i believe kwa hii practice yenye praise and worship as wanafanya mm -hmm. what will manifest at that during that time is what will manifest at the altar mm -hmm. if this practice is majorly dwelling on voices instrument keys mm -hmm. alignment of keys alignment of voices mm -hmm. Mkienda huko mbele the only thing you will be delivering is what you practice but if this practice is also led mm. by the spirit you're doing it and you're doing it in line and you're not doing it to show off mm -hmm. because one thing that we mess up is i have a good voice i can sing and that is it mm. you just go you practice and you go and do the same thing at the altar that is where you find that most the congregation can't even align mm. with such a okay, divide they will be divided because what you are producing is what is what you practice mm. practiced and what you practiced is the good voice the instruments mm. and what mm -hmm. yeah there was one occasion i was in church and uh, the screen went off the projection screen went off nobody was singing at the congregation because the song that is being delivered at the altar is new nobody understands it so it appears more of a of a concert more than a worship uh, moment and in line to that when when pastor had finished preaching and called the present worship to minister they didn't have a preparation for a song so they just sang one they just sang one of the old school musics which today we call them old school which i know the word of god does not change but the entire church was involved in that worship that moment and you could feel the presence is heavy Mm -hmm. Now I find I find uh, it very hard to understand why if you are coming to worship the Lord do we really need the projection screen or this screen should be used just for bulletins and updates on the church because I find it hard how will you focus with your spirit to heaven and your face is fixed on the screen Okay um 
you know this is the technology keeps on a new era <laughs> yeah this is a new era in technology keeps on coming up every now and then so the projections can be there but as the worship team mm. it is not a good it is not really fair let me use the word fair mm. it is not really fair to just sing new songs the whole set that you have is just new new songs, new songs. i understand we should sing a new song unto the lord mm. but remember these are people you're leading mm. and if this is a new song unto the lord i believe if, if you're guided by the holy spirit of god mm-hmm. He will also guide you into which songs that can align that Everyone. people can flow with. Mm. It is not a matter of pleasing the people that you sing ati tunaimba zenye wanapenda hapana. Mm. It's a matter of aligning with the guidance of the Holy Spirit because it is the same same spirit that that searches these oh. people's mm-hmm. hearts mm-hmm. and it will make you to understand what exactly is needed at a specific time at the, during at the given time of worship. Yeah, the given time. Because I find it I find it so off What I do believe is when when you're introducing a new song for the next people I think during presentation time is the best time to introduce new song. Yeah. So the church member will listen to that song at the presentation, follow the lyrics and at their free time they listen to that song again or uh, go find it out. So when the next time you're involving it into the worship segment it's already known. But the, you find that a song comes out today this week and you sing it on Sunday because it's trending. We don't understand where this song has been uh, written from. We don't understand what's the power behind this song mm-hmm. because some, not all worship songs are worship songs. Some are written in different altars that are not even godly. Some are written because the musician want to make money. Yeah, yeah. And sure. uh, they are not having the godliness in it. So it's just an empty noise before God. And that's where you'll find that some music will just have a lifespan of one week and they disappear. Because you can look at the songs that were written under the influence of the Holy Spirit. They are timeless songs. And if you sing them today, even though they were 90s, they still have a move. Yeah, true. So I I find the, the, the point of contention there. What do you think about that? Coming up with new song, just singing the new song without really analyzing the song. It is important to analyze. Actually there is something I learned recently. Mm. It is important to analyze and see which type of song is this because nowadays I understand the enemy is a uh, crafty. Yeah, very crafty. He will look at you and say, "Annette, you really want to you really need money mm. and you have a good voice." Mm-hmm. Why don't you just sing even if it is why why don't you just come up with a, a song and you go to the studio and you produce it mm-hmm. the intention behind me me kutoa your wimbo is that I'm looking for money the spirit behind it the spirit is behind the spirit it of mammon yeah money 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 i want money you're focused in that place mm-hmm. so when worshipers really take this song you want to do it and lead people into worship with it there is work to be done <laughs> There is a lot of work to be done. Spirit revelation, new yeah. revelation. Because uh, you might be thinking you're worshiping but you're making noise. So somebody who made a joke and say sometimes God in the new generation, sometimes God will just take headphones or via scare songs the angels. Acha keleza ukuchini because what we are singing we don't know where we are going. Yeah, mm-hmm. and apart from that we are very filthy, we are just making noise. Yeah. Because maombi ya The secret place is not there. Yeah, there is no secret place then there, there is no that consecration. So to add on it, the song that you're singing is empty. Empty. So to have a, an effective spirit led worship, we need to build our altars of secret place more than our physical public space. Mm. Because uh, that's where things are built. Things built in secret have power than things built in public. Yeah, true. Because yeah. public is just manifestation of the secret. Is money. But people are afraid of that. We how many worshipers attend devotions or prayer session church if you can just count. You know worshipers believe that after they they've done their practice on Saturday then on Sunday the right time to come is just before they go to the pulpit. To warm up. Eh, and maybe maybe before before the service begin mm-hmm. begins there is a prayer session mm-hmm. maybe they they've been called to do some prayers before they 
they go into mm. worship mm. but many find it as a bona wana tusumbua mm. yeah bona wana tusumbua and another thing someone might come into these prayer services but at home there is more you have to sacrifice mm. we have to sacrifice mm -hmm. a lot in that secret place place sorry we have to pray and consecrate ourselves not only when we are being seen in public see time umekutana pra kwa mama this is the time to pray before we begin practices mm. don't only depend on that we have to go deeper into into the that secret place where you are alone mm. with god you and god mm. Yeah. So what do you think is the hardest thing in a Christian life? Laziness. That's the <laughs> <laughs> Laziness. <laughs> I think you just cut a cross all through because if you're lazy to read the Bible, we'll not read the word. You won't read the if word. If you're lazy to pray, we'll not pray. Yeah. And if you're not you're not ready and open to hear from God, you just sleep. You Laziness just actually sleep. is is what the enemy uses. Yeah, it is laziness and then we come to social media they just align they distract you you just feel like and then social media and then you you, you come to a place you feel like ah sijiski kufanya nita mm. nitafanya kesho mm. that's just laziness procrastinate you procrastinate everything you're supposed to read that bible you know i saw a certain video on social media where someone was praying that god i want to know you i really want to know you please a uh, reveal yourself to me mm. let me know more about you mm -hmm. and then the angel there is that still voice that tells you it is time to read your bible mm -hmm. maybe after you're seeing that bible just next to your bed mm -hmm. you look at it you look at your phone and you're like ah my phone <laughs> yeah and that man's is man's best friend man's best friend social media laziness it is killing christians a lot and that's a tactic of the enemy actually and sometimes we just put a blind eye on it but it's true the enemy knows of the power of christian to be full they have to be in constant communication and union with the father but for me to come and cut that i need to put something distractions remember what what nibala um, balam when he was going to cast the children of israel and they found them that they were living in a certain way that was giving god power in a, a cross manner so the altar was at the center of the camp so that all people were fortified by the altar so any curse that was being thrown to the, them was not catching them because Balan. the altar was at the center of their life it's the same as christian life when the altar the presence of god is the center of your life the enemy will not attack but remember remember what he did the advice that he gave was that introduce some immorality to them and then the love of god will be removed the power of god will be removed then you can cast them yeah so the enemy has mastered the tactic of separating christians from doing the the, the, the needful mm -hmm. that can help them remain in union with god mm -hmm. and it's really working that is why i'm saying there's a lot of work to be done we really need to do a lot as christians we need to go back to that root of worship to the first yeah. point of worship the contact in line to going back to the first contact what do you think a new believer or somebody who is a worshiper or a general christian should do to go back to that position sacrifice has to be done a lot and what are these sacrifices so the first sacrifice is to step out of that comfort zone mm. when we talked about laziness and we said it's the biggest uh, weakness that mm. we have mm -hmm. it is uh, the sacrifice that we can make is to avoid this laziness when it's time to read the bible read the bible mm. when it's time and then being that worship is a lifestyle how do you do your your daily activities how mm. is it how, how is your routine how mm. is how how do you carry on your duties mm. starting from uh, and one thing that i will start with before going to that lifestyle it is the heart state it is the heart how is the the, the state of your heart you have to we we as christians we have to really work on our hearts there is something okay you can take a, a cup 
and wash in the outside mm-hmm. but if the inside in a baki kuwa chafu mm-hmm. still someone cannot drink from using that cup it's what jesus told the pharisees yes you wash outside of the cup by observing the law and all this thing but you forget the real thing the real the heart the heart how is your heart mm-hmm. is it renewed is it transformed mm-hmm. ha, have you really has jesus worked on transforming your your mind your heart mm-hmm. the inside of you then from there we can go when i talk about the heart i'm talking about simple things that we do gossips we talk about uh, we talk about gossips hey let me tell you in churches where gossip is paramount it is very paramount on a timetable ish it is very paramount i was asking someone the other day between katia job mm. between a working place or an organization or l- let me just say a working place and a church mm. where do you think there is much gossip compared to the other akasema uwezani na mambo ya kanisa 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 uwezani yeah and it is very true It's it true. is very true apart from gossip uh, we, the, the normal things mm. like uh, do you have the love of god in you how do you treat people mm. do you do you have that humanity that love of god in you mm. and the bible says that if god's love has not been perfected in you then you cannot you cannot give what you have what you don't yeah, have yeah. you cannot offer what you don't have if you ask me for food and i don't have food i can't give you mm. so if we don't have that love of god in our hearts what is full is what will flow out the yeah, that is, of the heart the mouth speaks so going back to that root of worship we start with the inside of us mm. and this is by reading the word of god know what god wants you mm. to be or expects you to be mm. as a son mm-hmm. in the kingdom read the word of god because that is where all answers are mm. it is not a matter of going to people asking them questions every answer is in the bible mm. so we avoid laziness we read the word of god our lifestyle out here how we deal with people mm-hmm. our eyes we need to guard our gates the gate mm-hmm. of the eye the ears what we listen to mm-hmm. yeah the, the what we we watch what, how we speak the things that we that, that get yeah. out of our mouth yeah we get engaged in so it is a broad topic actually that's what i've just realized we, we have been we have been seeing quite a lot of guys just we are worship ministers at the altar but outside here then we are engaged in the another altar which is now secular secular altars and we say don't judge don't judge that has been the normal term around here nowadays don't judge god is the one who judges uh, whatever yes we don't want to judge but uh why should a minister live a double life you are uh, drinking the cup of god and drinking the cup of the world because if you are going to tell us that you are so much uh it's called conservative that we want to uphold the righteousness of god only i think we we, we need to draw a line between the true worship of god and the lukewarmness because we can say we are worshiping god but our life we are 50 50 or 50 50 we are ministers on sunday weekdays we are uh, <laughs> the secular artist uh, lip syncers <laughs> we are lip syncing mm-hmm. the other music i think we should just draw the line or what do you think <laughs> should happen in here there's no point of saying i'm a, I'm a minister in the altar then the weekdays i'm just there doing the normal music normal trend normal life and that is why we narrow down to the fact that worship is a lifestyle mm. yeah apart from being that being that saint on sundays mm. monday to friday what do you do mm. how do you carry yourself what do you listen to what do you listen to what do you say what do you entertain which company do you keep because music is spirit nobody can touch music but we yeah. all feel music it comes as words but that's the power True. so you can't say two spirit will work on the same body one will always live and the and the gentle one is always the holy spirit he will always live yeah and leave you to do what you want he can't so force himself so we'll, we'll have that worship that you say we, we we have the form of godliness but we deny the power that works in it because now that's we are denying the holy spirit we have the view of christian living yes but the power of the holy spirit is not there 
and i believe right now much of our altars are led of people who are just empty on the inside but speaking what looks godly mm-hmm. and open before people so the call today i think is going back to the secret place the altar reviving the altar like like what jo, um, jacob did he went back to build the altars of his fathers and then prayed there so that's that's what should be happening as ministers let me hear broadly from you what do you think as ministers we should do to go back to the authentic worship as we wind up basically we really touched on that uh but just to in conclusion as ministers as worshipers as sons of god in the kingdom actually let me say ch- children of god mm-hmm. because That's i don't know which are. level you are in because for you to be a son you have to be a child mm-hmm. first mm-hmm. yeah so as sons as children of god the we have to go back and search deeply we allow no we allow god to search our hearts mm. deeply we really need to do that so that we can understand well who we are worshiping i think by knowing who we really worship mm. it will be the first step to going back to that root of worship focusing on the true being no no aligning aligning yourself to the true focus mm-hmm. because nowadays we our focus has been distra- distracted by good music the way he sings the way she sings good voices mm-hmm. good instruments big church mm-hmm. you 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 look at a church you say this is so big then mm-hmm. there must be true worship in this place mm-hmm. but you find that these people who are here they don't really know who they are worshiping because their focus is distracted it is very distracted and uh, uh you know there is something i there is some that, there is a story that i had mm-hmm. that uh no let me summarize it the main intention of this story was that the people who you are leading no as a, as a christian you're mm-hmm. being led mm-hmm. into worship mm-hmm. is it the music that is making you to feel like you're worshiping or you really have that understanding of god mm-hmm. who god is in you unajua unaweza sikia mziki tamu useme oh my god those people are really it carries you it carries you but maybe you're not even being carried by the true worship in you by the spirit the spirit is not guiding you it is mm-hmm. the music that is guiding the you the surrendered life is not there yeah it is the sweet music that is guiding you wengine wanasemanga you go to that altar maybe you're singing unakumbuka mashida zako unalia people think that you're worshiping <laughs> god and you're really touched by the move of god kumbe it is your problems mm-hmm. Yeah so understanding who really God is and we worship him the way he really is mm-hmm. that is the first step to going back to the true true worship understanding God we, yeah know who you are worshiping because i can't um, how can i put it i can't come i talk to you mm-hmm. for the first time mm-hmm. and then i i tell you everything mm-hmm. like completely everything everything mm-hmm. about me i i must know who i'm talking to mm-hmm. that is when we can have a good conversation actually yeah, yeah. that is when we can have and, a good conversation and both that unhindered unhindered yeah so when you know god mm-hmm. then that is when you can really know how to worship him how great he is mm-hmm. how holy he is mm-hmm. first samuel chapter 2 verse 2 he is the there is no one besides him mm-hmm. he is the only holy god so when you know all the revelations about god mm-hmm. the worship will penetrate that is a fast will carry step. people to him then yeah then we come back to purification consecration all those they just go in line there is a lot to be mm-hmm. done so do you agree that we need another episode for this you just start purification this consecration is wide. not yet <laughs> so i think we need a whole month series on on spirit led worship But this far I really think I've taken enough for me from you and I believe that our fans have really taken some home and uh, we are going to end it right here at this time and uh, thank you for coming once again and thank you for always providing time to share what the Lord has deposited in you so you're welcome is there any final word you want to give 
No, thank you so much for inviting me. I am humbled so much to be here and uh I believe I don't know everything. Mm-hmm. So you who has watched mm-hmm. if there is anything you can add so that we learn don't mind mm-hmm. but just write it on the comment section. Mm-hmm. We will appreciate to learn from you too. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a one man show or a two man show. It is a all community of Christian. We work together towards ensuring that we give unhindered, unaltered and pure worship to God. Thank you for staying tuned and uh, as you continue to watch kindly subscribe, like, share and comment so that we can reach the wider base of community and reach others who are not yet even in the Christian community. We are glad you chose to be part of this great team and God bless you for choosing to be one among us and supporting this great cause. God bless you. Oh, 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 oh,